Okay, that took a little while. I imagine it's um, uncompressing a disk image. So, first thing I'm going to do is to get this installed, I think. That's probably the best thing. Okay, so it's using the Calamaris installer. So if you've used that before, it might be familiar. Okay. So I've chosen my language, clicked on next. So it's quite slow. I'm not sure if it's the USB or the port. Or just the live image. Okay, so now I'm selecting my location. Check the details are correct. Click next. Keyboard. <clears throat> now I want to do some manual partitioning here because what I want to do is create a separate partition for the <clears throat> um, disk images that I'll be downloading uh, later on. So I'll do manual partitioning and I'm going to delete the existing partition. I'm going to create a new partition which is going to be um, probably about 100 meg will leave plenty of space. Mount point, I'm going to put that at slash var slash DVDs. <clears throat> and then I'm going to create another one for the root file system. Um, in fact, I'll create a separate boot as well, actually. So I'll make that 200. 50 megabytes and the root file system with the rest of the space. Okay, I'll leave that as BIOS uh, system just for simplicity, but obviously if your system supports UEFI or you want to use GPT, then that's up to you. So I'll put in my name and I'll log in without a password. It's only a temporary system. So that's what's going to happen with the partitioning. And now let's start the installation. Okay, that's finished. Now look, we're going to reboot into the new Debian 11 we've just installed. So I'll unplug the DVD when it comes to the BIOS boot screen. As we don't to boot that, obviously. Hopefully the video will synchronize itself in a while. I 
Okay, so that's, as you can see, it's booted a lot quicker. That's booted off the hard disk. That's fine. So what we need to do now is to install Jigdo because it's not available by default. So let's get the console up. Increase the size of the font a bit. I'm not sure if this is set up for sudo. It is, right, that's good. Um, so, yeah, if I type in the command we're going to use, it's called jigdo lite. Yeah, it's not found, so I need to install jigdo. And the package is jigdo-file. And you can see it's actually installing wget as well, which is going to be useful because we do need that also. So that's installed. Now I need to get a browser up. To get some files that we need. So let's just get rid of these tabs. And we need to go to um, www.debian.org. Uh, sorry, no, it's CD image. CD image. Debian.org forward slash CD images. I think that's what it is. No, it's not. Uh, oh, sorry, it's just CD image. Okay, cd image dot debian dot org forward slash cd image because we want to get the older version of Debian, not the latest 11.5, which is what we're running at the moment. If I do cat etc os release, you can see that it's version 11 we're running. And I want to install version 10, which is called Buster. So if we scroll down here and go into the archive directory for the older versions. And you can see who, there's all the um, previous versions of Debian. Now, I really want to install the base version of 10 would be ideal. I could also install, go straight to installing the latest version. Um, but there's two issues here. One, I want to show you how to upgrade the version, so I'm not going to install the latest version of Debian 10. And B, for the, my bit of hardware, I found that the kernel version was too low that the driver required, and I had to install 10.1 as the base version. So I'm actually going to start with 10.1. Um, so that might be something to consider if you're doing this for the same reasons for me, or if there's some other reason that you need to start at a particular version. So now I want to go into AMD64, that's the architecture I'm using, and I want the Jigdo DVD directory, and there's some information there about everything that's in here. And the files I want at the moment to get going, because I need to reinstall Debian from scratch, so I'm not sure whether this live DVD installation um, will work with the DVD set. At the outset, I can tell you when you do a proper installation from the Debian DVD, you do get a Debian wallpaper rather than this vanilla one, uh, KDE one. So the fact that that's different tells me that the live DVD installation is not the same as the DVD set installation. So that's why I'm going to reinstall Debian using the DVD image. But at the moment, I'm only going to install, uh, sorry, only going to download the first DVD purely to write a new USB disk, uh, USB device, purely to reinstall Debian. Once I've done that, then I'll be downloading the remaining DVDs and showing you how to attach them to the system to make them usable. And of course, I'm still connected to the internet at the moment um, while I'm doing this, but once I've got this first, D uh, once I've downloaded all the DVDs, in fact, I could download them all now, come to think of it. Um, there wouldn't be any harm while we've got the internet um, available. 
So, um, yeah, first thing I'm going to do is to change to the VAR DVDs directory which I created. Um, oh, it looks like it hasn't mounted it. First tab. Okay, looks like it hasn't mounted it for some reason or created it. So let's check. Uh, it has actually created it there, but looks of it. Yep, there it is there. It was about 100 gig. So let's just do a file check on that to make sure there's a file system on it. Uh, SDA1. Yes, it is. Okay, so I need to actually manually edit FS tab to add in this partition at var dvd so let's have a look to see if the actual directory exists it doesn't so i'm going to make the slash var um, dvds in fact it might be some might be better to actually locate this under lib that might be a, maybe a more sensible place to put this but for this demonstration um, i'll put it at this point just to make it a bit simpler but I think lib would probably be a better location for it or possibly even cache maybe um, but maybe lib I think so now I'm going to I'll use nano actually it's a bit easier with Debian Debian via has got a lot of features missing by default uh, so nano etc fs tab and all I need to do is to add in a new line here, UUID, and paste in the, oh, I didn't keep it. I need to copy this file again, this uh, UUID. So it's SDA1 was the partition I'd created for the DVDs. Paste that UUID in. It's going in far forward slash DVDs. It's an oops, ext4, and I'll just copy these settings here. Uh, and put a three in. I'm not sure three is valid even, but that will do. So now if I do mount minus a to mount all the partitions df minus h you can see now i've got the partition mounted where i want it so i'm going to change into that partition and there's the lost and found directory which proves it's a separate partition and what i'm going to do because i'm going to download all of these um, files i'm going to actually download the whole web page. So I'm going to take a copy of the URL and I'm going to download it with rsync. Use AV. Paste the link in. I need to change the URL to rsync because that's how I'm going to download it. And I want to copy, take the, yeah, that's important. Take off the trading slash, otherwise you'll you won't get what you expect and I want to place the files in this location um, in fact before I do that because I'm going to be downloading different versions I'm going to make a separate directory called 10.1.0 because that's the version I'm downloading I'm going to change into that and recall that rsync command and Run that you can see it's downloading all the files in that directory and bearing in mind there's no ISOs that are being downloaded these two files are going to be used by Jigdo the Jigdo is like a header and I think the template is the um, file that contains all the information about the files that belong in the ISO
I'll just wait for these. Yeah, there's 16 DVDs to download. So um, the updates we don't need, um, but I won't bother deleting those jig -doos. Um These are to update from a previous version. Um, I just won't bother downloading from those um, particular files. I'll just concentrate on the actual raw DVD files, the, the base DVD files. So, um, yeah, the first thing I'm going to do then is to download the um, DVD files and I'm going to use this on mass. Um, going to do this by typing jigdo dash light, and then you can specify either to press enter and you have to type in each file name. Um, in fact, I need to change into the jigdo directory because it created a jigdo directory. There's the files that just downloaded. And in fact, what I might do first of all is to do a SHA 512 sum and check the files that we've downloaded. Obviously, there'll be some failures because there'll be the DVDs, but as long as the others say OK, which they all appear to, then that's fine. We know we've downloaded them correctly. So, yeah, jigdo dash light. As I say, if you can press enter there, you can just type in file names one at a time. But I want to download all 16 DVDs. So the best way of running this is to put in a wildcard. So, for example, if I copy that file there and replace the 5. Now, I could either do star, but that could be potentially dangerous. What's probably better is to put a range in 1, 2... 16 and that will um, the bash will expand that to download Debian 10.1.0 AMD DVD dash 1 dot dot jig do 2 dot jig do and so on all the way up to 16 so it's a bit more control over that so if I run that it says images offered by this file um, files to scan, press enter to scan all of them. We've already specified the file anyway. It's going to do the current directory. And now it's asking me for a mirror to download from. And it says here, as you can see, there's various ways to narrow down the mirrors for your location. You can either put a country code in, the actual country name, or even a server name. So I'm going to put UK in for United Kingdom. And you can see it's listed several servers here. Um, I guess I could try this first one. So if I copy that link and paste it in, oops, right click and paste it. No, it's not working. Okay, I'll highlight it instead and paste that in. And now it's asking for a Debian non-US mirror. And as it says here, please repeat the mirror selection for non-US. Do not simply copy the URL you've entered above. This does not work because the path on the servers is different. So put non-US in. And you can see there's all these mirrors here. So I'll just look again for one that's local. Uh, just quickly see if there's any UK ones. I didn't see one. Okay, no, it's not a UK one, so Germany's relatively nearby, so I'll copy that one, for example, put that in. And you can see what's happening now is that it's downloading individual files for DVD 1. And when that's done, it will move on to DVD 2 and so on and just download a whole lot. Now, as I say, this is going to take uh, several hours. Um, the internet is not particularly fast. Uh, yours might be faster or slower, so you have to obviously allow time for these DVDs to download. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go offline for a moment, copy them off of a disk I've already got, 
and I'll resume the video from there. Okay, so I've copied those files across and as you can see, I've also run the command that's on the command line now um, to verify the ISOs and they're all correct. The reason why I've got a couple of failures is because these are the update DVDs which I'm not interested in because I'm using 10.1.0 as the base version for the installation. So those update DVDs would be absolutely useless to me. So yes, that's all um, installed or copied across and validated. Um, when, you've, when you've run the jig do and it finishes, it says it's validated them or, or they check out correctly, but it's probably still worth um, running the um, SHA-512 sum on the checksum file just to check that um, it all all looks okay and as you see it only took five minutes to check all 16 DVDs. So the next thing I need to do now is to copy the first DVD to the USB drive and use that to boot from and reinstall uh, Debian 10. So as you can see I've just plugged the, the, the USB in that I use to install this current Debian that you're using and I'll click on the right icon uh, you can see the hint there it's got 11.5.0 so we're currently running Debian 11.5 which is the current version the latest version of Debian but as I say the whole point of this is to install um, an older version offline now um, I've actually also downloaded the updates that I require um, and that's just basically the same thing as before so I've previously this is the base version of downloaded previously and then I've also gone to the version that I need well in fact I've had to go to version 10.12 because that's the last got the last version of the kernel that works with the driver for this bit of hardware that I was talking about earlier. But instead of downloading all the DVDs there, what I've downloaded is just the update DVDs because these hold all the changes that have occurred since the original um, Debian 10.0.0 was released. So you just didn't need to download these three um, DVDs and I've got them uh, downloaded in that directory there so if I do a listing there you can see there's the other jig do's and templates but I don't need to download them it's just these three DVDs which I've downloaded and in theory I should uh, actually double check them because I haven't done that yet So, um, SHA 512, 1C SHA 512. So, you can see it skipped all the DVDs that I haven't downloaded and don't need. And while that's downloading, just go back to show you that it's these three files that I've, these three DVDs, and you can see it says Debian update 10.12.0. Um, I haven't been able to download or copy on because there's not enough room on the disk but I will have to copy on the latest update so what I'll do after I've installed uh, or updated to 10.12 I'll show you how I lock the kernel to the version that's currently installed at 10.12 because I don't want it updated past that version and then I can go back and download the latest version and this is what would happen if they release say 10.14 in several months time I'll do exactly the same thing just go into this directory here check uh, do DVD and download again the updates I can delete the 10.12.0 because I don't need any more anymore these 10.13.0 DVD updates include all the updates previously so it's 
updates for 10.1.2.3 all the way through to 10.12 plus the updates for 10.13 so again that's all I need I'll copy that onto the disk and that, that will form part of the new system so that's basically um, how it will be updated so as you can see the checksums they've they're all okay for the ISOs, all three of them. So that's fine. So the thing to do now, oh, there's one other thing that needs to be downloaded just in case you've got hardware that needs firmware. Um, there's another link that you'll need, which I think is this link here. Uh, no, that's a wiki page. Yep, it's this one. Um, but this doesn't have the archive. Again, these links always take you to the latest version. So the link you need to go to is... Um, oh, sorry, yes, it has got an archive link there. That's the one you want to go to. There you go. And there's all the uh, non-free. And these are, un are unofficial um disk images but you need to download the equivalent for the version that you're, you're installing so I've already got on the disk the 10.1 uh, non-free and it's the same thing before Jigdo DVD download the Jigdo and the template file the SHA sums file and just do the same operation as I did before on that Jigdo file and if I show you 10.1.0 I've put it in a non-free directory again there's a Jigdo DVD directory because of our sync the actual directory and there you can see the firmware file with the Jigdo and all the checksub files and likewise I've done the same with version 12 and there it is there so that's all prepared to do uh, the first installation and the first upgrade so now I'm going to go into the 10.1 to get the initial disk burnt to the, or written to the um, DVD, uh, sorry, the USB drive. So once again, I'm going to use DD input file equals Debian, Debian 10.1. 1.0 AMD 64 DVD 1. ISO output file. Okay, I need to know what the allocation is. So F this minus L. Oops. And you can see my USB is dev SDB. So that's what I need to put in here. Out file equals slash dev slash SDB block size 64k and status equals progress to monitor how it's written and once again this will probably take yeah 10 minutes or so to write 